All right, pop quiz before we get into today's discussion. And for my regular viewers, no, we're not talking about abstract algebra. We're talking about algebra one and algebra two as would typically be studied in middle school and high school in the American education system. So here's your pop quiz, okay? You gotta know this stuff. And if you don't know it, your algebra teacher deserves to be mad at you, fair and square, okay? Here it is, zero divided by one equals what? And the next question is one divided by one equals what? And the next question is zero divided by zero equals what? And one divided by zero equals what? The problem I've noticed with some younger students is that they screw stuff like this up because they have a yearning, seemingly, to know all of these facts only as a set of rules. And so it's very easy to just get some of the rules mixed up. You should know the answers to all of these questions because you understand the concepts underlying them. Today, we're going to go over those concepts so that you can answer all questions that are anything like this. Here are the answers. Zero divided by one is zero. One divided by one is one. Zero divided by zero is not defined. So we're just gonna put D N E for does not exist there's not an answer to this. And one divided by zero, that is also not defined. Now, I said somewhat jokingly, if you get this stuff wrong, your algebra teacher deserves to be mad at you, but it's really not you that they should be mad at. It's one of your previous teachers, right? Because somebody has failed you if you go into algebra and you don't understand this stuff. But it's not a big deal. You can figure it out. You can learn it at any point, And it's never too late. In fact, now might just be the perfect time. So let's just go over the concepts underlying these equations. You'll understand all of them by the time we're done. I hope. The gist of it is that these equations are gonna come from understanding fractions, and these equations are gonna come from understanding division and why there's a problem in these particular contexts. So let's start with fractions, how they're written, and what they mean. You should think of a fraction as telling you two things, okay? So for example, if I have one half, this is telling me two things. It's telling me that there's a whole that has been split into two parts. The denominator tells me how it's been sliced and diced. It's been cut into two parts. The numerator, the number on top, tells us how many of those parts we have. So this says we have a whole that's been cut into two parts, and we have one of those parts. Visually, we can represent that like this. Let's say this rectangle represents a whole. So this is the whole. Maybe it's a whole candy bar, maybe it's a whole dollar bill, you know, whatever. The denominator tells me it's been split into two parts. So just like that, our whole has been cut into two parts. We don't have all of the parts. How many do we have? The numerator tells us we have one part. So we could represent that by shading it in. And that's one half represented visually. That's all fractions are. For another example, consider the fraction two thirds. Again, we have a whole, which we can represent as a rectangle. This is a whole. It's been cut into some number of parts. How many? Well, the denominator tells us it's been cut into three parts, that number on the bottom of the fraction. Okay, so we can represent that like this. We had a whole, it's been cut into three parts. How many of the parts do we have? The numerator tells us how many we have. We have two of the three parts. Again, we can represent that by shading two of those three parts in, and that's two thirds represented as a fraction, or sorry, represented visually. That's the fraction two thirds, that's what it looks like visually. And this gives us the explanation for these two equations. Let's do this first one, zero over one equals zero. Why is that? Well, let's put it in our list, zero over one. So there's a whole, and it's been cut into one part. Well, it's already in one part, so we don't actually have to do any cutting. It's just been left whole. Now there's one part, and how many of those one parts do we have? We have none of them, so we wouldn't shade anything. So how much do we have? We have nothing, uh, otherwise known as jack diddly squat. That's what we have, and that's why this is equal to zero. How much do we have? We have nothing. Keep in mind, this does make sense, right? This is defined. It's not like these equations, which, which are problems, and you'll see why. It's not like those. This makes perfect sense. There's a hole, and we don't have any of it, so we have nothing, and that's a perfectly valid equation. And then, this other equation, one over one, is like the same thing, but opposite. So we can write that down here. Let me just bring the microphone down a little bit. 
And here's a hole, right? We represent that with a rectangle. It's been cut into one part, so we aren't actually cutting it at all. We're just leaving it alone. How many of the one parts do we have? We have one of them. So we would shade that one part and we have the whole thing. We have one hole. One over one is equal to one. And hopefully you can see how this could apply to similar situations like two over two or three over three or four over four. If I have two over two, we can represent this visually. Here's my hole, it's a rectangle. It's been cut into two parts, the denominator's two, so it's been cut into two parts. How many of the parts do we have? The numerator tells us. We have two of those two parts. So in fact, we have the whole thing. That's why this is equal to one. We have one hole. So one over one is one, two over two is one, three over three is one. If we cut a hole into some number of parts, and we have all the parts, then we have one whole. Of course, we could also change the denominator in this fraction, zero over one, and its value would not change as long as we don't change the denominator to zero. That's when you get into problems. But for example, if we add zero over two, that would also be zero, right? Because what is zero over two? Well, it says there's a whole and we've split it into two parts and we don't have any of the parts. And so, well, we still just have nothing. Okay, now understanding those two equations that are not defined, these guys with no answer, the zero over zero and one over zero, uh, we need to understand division and what division really means. So for that, let's look at a little example, like six divided by three. What is six divided by three? Remember that the fraction bar is just another way of representing division. So six over three, that's six divided by three, and hopefully you know that's equal to two. But why is it equal to two? Well, by the definition of division, six divided by three is equal to two, because if we take two and multiply it by three, we're going to get six. Two times three is equal to six. More generally speaking, if I have A divided by B, what this is going to equal is the number that when multiplied by B produces A. I'm gonna go ahead and write that out. So again, A divided by B is whatever number that when multiplied by B will produce A. It might help to look at a false equation to further explain this. So for example, 8 divided by 4 is not equal to 3. You know it's equal to 2. It's not equal to 3 because 3 times 4 is equal to 12, not 8. On the other hand, 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2 because 2 times 4 is 8. So the definition of division comes back to multiplication, and that's where we run into problems when 0 is involved. So let's begin by looking at this guy, one divided by zero. Apparently this does not exist, this isn't defined. Well, why the heck not? Well, because based on the definition of division, one divided by zero would have to equal, uh, let's say we gave it a name and then we'll see the issue. So let's say we call it C. So then if one divided by zero is equal to C, then it must be that c multiplied by zero is equal to one. By the definition of division, it must be that c multiplied by zero equals one. Do you see the issue? Clearly this isn't possible. There's no number c that would satisfy this equation because any number times zero is equal to zero. There is no such c, and so this just cannot work. Again, six divided by three is two because two times three is six but one divided by zero can't equal anything because there isn't anything that can be multiplied by zero to produce one. So then let's come over to zero over zero. You might think zero over zero should equal one, right? Just like one over one equals one, two over two equals one, four over four equals one. So what's the issue with zero over zero? Why doesn't that equal one? Well, again, let's consider our definition of division and let's suppose that it did equal something. Let's say zero divided by zero equals C. Then by definition of division, it must be that C times zero is equal to zero. 
So then what C? Oof, it could be anything, because anything times zero is equal to zero. This in a way has the exact opposite problem of one divided by zero. One divided by zero doesn't work because there isn't a single number that satisfies this equation. On the other hand, zero divided by zero doesn't work because every number satisfies this equation. So it just doesn't make sense to assign one value to zero over zero. There's just no way to define it. So again, the definition of division comes back to multiplication. In the case of one divided by zero, that multiplication equation does not have any values that would satisfy it, and so it doesn't make sense to define one over zero. On the other hand, zero over zero, if we consider its corresponding multiplication equation, which lies at the root of the division, this equation has infinitely many solutions, and so again it just doesn't make sense to assign a value to 0 divided by 0. To say that 0 divided by 0 should equal some particular number would be like telling you, you should be able to guess the number in my head from this hint. I'm thinking of a number. Can you guess it? Well no, because every number would be a valid guess, so there's just no way to define this division. And I should add, just like 1 divided by 0 is not defined, we also have, of course, that 2 divided by 0 is not defined, 3 divided by 0 is not defined, 7 divided by 0 is not defined, negative 5 divided by 0 is not defined, anything divided by 0 is not defined. In the case of 0 divided by 0, we see the issue, and for any other number divided by 0, it has this problem that 1 did. So I really hope that helped make these equations more clear. Let me give you a little set of problems to try answering before we go, and I'll explain the answers to all of these. So I'll write out four problems here, and you should say what the answer is if there is an answer, or say that it's undefined. So we have three divided by zero. Let's say we have four divided by four. We have zero divided by negative five. We have, let's say, negative 2 divided by negative 2. And we have, let's say, 2 minus 2 over 0. All right, so which one is equal to something and which ones do not exist? Well, let's go through it. 3 divided by 0, hopefully you know, does not exist. This is not defined. That's because there's nothing we can multiply 0 by to produce 3, so does not exist. 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1, because if we have a whole that's cut into 4 parts, and we have 4 of those parts, then in fact we have 1 whole. 0 divided by negative 5 is 0 for a similar reason. If we have a whole cut into negative 5 parts, which I know is getting a little weird, but just bear with me, if it's cut into negative 5 parts, and we have none of those parts, well, then we have nothing. We have zero. We got nothing. Negative two divided by negative two, that is equal to one. Because if we have a whole and it's been cut into negative two parts and we have negative two of those parts, well, we have all the parts. And so we have one whole. And then lastly, two minus two divided by zero. This does not exist. This is not defined because two minus two is zero. So this is just zero over zero, and of course zero over zero is not defined. Now if these negatives made you a little uncomfortable, that's fine, you could just ignore them, and it's more important that you're able to understand those whether or not they have the negatives. Now there are a million reasons why you should understand this stuff. You know, for example, you're gonna run into fractions like zero over something, and you're gonna run into fractions like something over itself, and you need to know what those are equal to. On the other hand, you're probably not going to run into fractions like this as much, but you definitely will when you make mistakes, and it's important to recognize these things as red flags. Most questions are going to have answers at this level of math, and so if you run into stuff like this, you know you've gone wrong. Occasionally, you might be doing some problems where you're supposed to be on the lookout for situations like this. You're supposed to see if any solutions exist, in which case, if you arrive at something like this, you would know that a solution 
equation does not exist. Your calculator will also get these things correct. So, you know, if you do three over three, you're gonna get one. If you do four over four, you're gonna get one. All of that stuff is, uh, is fine on the calculator. And same thing with dividing by zero. The calculator will not lead you astray. If I type zero divided by zero, I don't know how well you can see the calculator display. Let me zoom in a little. If I type zero divided by zero, I'm going to get an error. And that doesn't mean it's equal to zero. Some people like to make that mistake. That doesn't mean it's equal to zero. It just does not exist. It's not defined. Uh, similarly, if I do something like two divided by zero, I'm going to get that error. It is not defined. So that's how it would look on your calculator. All right, that's it from me. Good luck and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet.